Hey everyone, it's Sevi. Welcome to my guide on Lil Jeppy, the taller but shyer Landau sibling with an artistic touch. Jepard is known for his impressive defensive utilities as the standard 5-star preservation support, so in this video, I'll discuss his abilities in detail along with his gameplay tips, idolons, best relic and light cone builds, and team synergies. Let's dive in! My name is Jepard Landau. I'm the captain of the Silvermane Guards. As a preservation unit, Jepard is focused on protecting your allies thanks to his very strong team-wide shielding capabilities. In most cases, he can even keep the entire team safe without the need of another abundance or preservation party member. But even though his ultimate shielding is the highlight of his kit, his other support utilities are also quite valuable and not to be underestimated. So let's see what his entire kit has to offer. Jepard's basic attack does a two-punch combo, and while the damage is nothing to write home about, you want Jepard to mostly spend his turns doing basic attacks to generate skill points for the team. Jepard isn't exactly a skill-dependent unit, so he ends up being really helpful for skill point economy, especially to feed your more skill point-hungry teammates. On the other hand, Jepard's skill bonks the enemy with his guitar case. This has higher toughness damage compared to his basic attack. More importantly, it also has a 65% base chance to inflict freeze for one turn. This crowd could Control utility can be quite valuable in offering both offensive and defensive advantages. The most obvious benefit is that frozen enemies can't attack or use their abilities and have to use up a turn to remove freeze first. Some abilities have extra benefits when attacking enemies with a debuff or frozen on them, so Jepard can assist in enabling that. Frozen enemies can also stay in their broken state for longer since they have to use up a turn to thaw out. You generally still want to use his basic attacks more often to positively contribute to your team's skill point pool and the Skill's freeze chance is still subject to RNG and the enemy's effect resistances, but Jepard can be built in such a way that makes his freeze chance more reliable and some team synergies will benefit a lot from freezing enemies. You might also want to break enemies faster or get more energy to fill up your ultimate cost. In such cases, using his skill can be more advisable. If you want guaranteed freezing, Jepard can also be the one to break ice weak enemies to inflict freeze on them. Moving on, let's talk about Jepard's ultimate, his most valuable utility, as well as some tips on how to best maximize it. Casting it creates a very powerful shield for your entire team, which scales on his defense stat and lasts for 3 turns. This is a noticeable contrast from March 7th, our default preservation unit, since March's shield mainly comes from her skill, which requires a skill point and is single target. It has a 100 energy cost, which isn't bad, but if you haven't built energy regen or unlocked his ascension ability yet, it might feel like a lot at first. Anyway, Jepard's energy will mainly come from being attacked by enemies and using his basic attacks. If you need to squeeze out a bit more energy, you can use his skill, which generates more energy than a basic attack. Teammate abilities and effects can help, but for the most part, Jepard's energy is very self-sustaining once you progress enough with his build. If you don't have enough energy before initiating the battle, you can use his technique to immediately give your team a shield at the start of the battle, and this can last for two turns. This is very helpful to protect you until Jepard gets enough energy to start up his ultimate and keep it going. But if you do have full energy already, you can save the technique point for someone else and just use Jepard's ult at the start of the battle. It's also worth noting that the shield's 3 turn duration is based on the shielded character's turn, not Jepard's turns. Which means that if a character is fast enough to take more turns than their other teammates, the shield can expire sooner. This will likely happen to units with really high speed or when you use advanced forward abilities like with Branya or Sushang. All the more reason to ensure that Jepard's energy generation is reliable. In relation to that, you also want to be mindful of when you'll cast it. Since this is an ultimate ability, Jepard is able to activate at any time. But if your allies' turns are lined up and they aren't at risk of receiving damage yet, it might be better to save the ultimate right before the enemy takes their turns to attack. This is so that the ally doesn't spend the shield's duration unnecessarily. Of course, there might be special exceptions, like when the enemy has follow-up attacks of their own, but generally speaking, just be mindful of when you're casting the ultimate to really maximizes duration. As for Jepard's talent trace, this allows him to revive once per battle with a certain percent of his HP. He also keeps the buffs on him prior to getting knocked out. While you generally don't want a battle to be going badly enough that this effect gets triggered, it's at least a fail-safe option if ever Jepard takes too much from tanking enemy attacks. Especially since he's a preservation unit with the highest likelihood of being targeted by enemies, and more so because of his second ascension ability. Speaking of ascension abilities, let's go through them right now. His ascension 2 ability 
immunity gives him a higher chance to be attacked by enemies. This is in line with his role as a preservation unit, as not only does he shield allies, he can also direct more of the heat towards him. Since he's got a lot of defense, he can more effectively tank hits than his allies, and he does want to get attacked for energy generation. Next, his Ascension 4 ability only kicks in when his revive ability activates, as he now gets full energy when that happens, allowing him to immediately use his ultimate for more emergency defensive measures. Finally, his Ascension 6 ability increases his attack by 35% of his current defense, and this refreshes at the start of each turn, so any defense stat changes will also affect the attack gained. It gives him a bit more offensive value by increasing his damage contribution. So all in all, Jepard's a very simple unit to play with incredible defensive and support utility. He generates skill points for teammates, has largely self-sustaining energy generation, and has access to freeze, which can be an advantageous utility in a lot of scenarios. Once you get his ultimate up and his energy loop going, Jepard can keep on refreshing his shield to keep your allies safe. With a sufficiently built Jepard, you can expect his shields to be very, very comfortable protection. For his traces leveling priority, his ultimate is the most important, so keep it leveled up as high as possible to ensure maximum shielding. His skill and basic attack levels only affect their damage multipliers, which aren't as important, so these are very low priority. His talent level is also quite unimportant since it only affects how much HP he gets back when he resurrects, so basically just prioritize his ultimate among his major traces. For his ascension abilities, unlock A2 when it's available. The other ones are very low priority, but if ever, start with A6 first, then A4. His minor traces boost his defense, effect resistance, and ice damage bonus. The defense traces are of course very important, and unlocking them if they're available is recommended. The effect resistance are lower priority but still useful, while ice damage bonus traces should be saved for last. Let's quickly see what his idolins add to his kit should you ever get duplicates of Jepard. E1 gives his skill's freeze base chance a 35% increase, making it have 100% base chance total. That makes it much more reliable, so you can worry less about the RNG aspect of it. This can also affect the target stats in his build, since a high default base chance can let you aim for less effect hit rate stats. E2 makes enemies get a 20% speed reduction for one turn when they get unfrozen from Jepard's skill freeze. This is an interesting idolin that further improves Jepard's crowd control utility, and a 20% reduction is pretty significant for pushing the enemy further down the queue and letting your teammates get in more potential turns before them. E3 increases Jepard's ultimate and talent level by 2. E4 gives your team a 20% effect resistance increase, which is an added layer of defense for preventing the enemy's debuffs. E5 increases Jepard's skill and basic attack level. And lastly, E6 is only relevant when his revive triggers. It advances him up the queue when he revives and he gets 50% more HP back, which which can potentially make him revive at full health if the talent level is high enough. It's a highly situational effect, but it's still something. Now for Jepard's relics. We'll go through his stat preferences, then the sets. For the body, the best and default route is defense for straight up thicker shields and better tanking. Now you might wonder if an effect hit rate, or EHR, body piece is also viable. While I wouldn't generally recommend it, there can be very niche cases for it. Aside from boosting his freeze chance, it helps to reach the Bellabog of the Architect's 50% EHR target, one of his recommended planar ornaments. And there's also a certain preservation light cone that has a chance to inflict burn, which EHR can help with. However, an EHR body piece would be much less optimal if you already get a lot from substats or have his signature light cone or E1. So ultimately, the ideal scenario is just using a defense piece and getting EHR substats in different pieces. Of course, you can eventually experiment swapping into an EHR piece if you're comfortable sacrificing shield thickness. For the feet piece, speed or defense are your options, but I would recommend speed more for his late game build. Without it, Jepard's base speed is pretty low at 95, which impacts his turn frequency and can be quite detrimental in long battles. If he can't keep up, then he'll be able to generate less skill points for the team, which is one of his valuable roles. It'll also be harder to find opportunities to try to freeze enemies and gain back some energy through his basic attack or skill. If he also gets crowd controlled, being able to take a turn sooner can help get rid of unwanted debuffs sooner too. So even if Jepard is a tank shielder, speed has very notable benefits for him. If you're using one of the planar ornaments that need 120 speed, a speed feed piece will very likely be needed to hit 120 speed by default. Of course, defense still has benefits, and how much speed you already get from substats can also be a point of consideration. For the planar sphere, go for defense, and for the link rope, it's really important to have energy regeneration rate. It's a rare stat that you can't get through relic substats, so having that as a rope main stat helps immensely with Jepard's 
Earth's energy needs. Once you get a high or max leveled ER link rope on him, you'll likely notice a huge improvement with his energy needs. As for the substats, aim for defense percent, speed, and effect hit rate. Effect resistance is also good to give him more survivability and help brush off crowd control debuffs which could hinder him from effectively protecting your team. HP is lower priority but at least it helps him be a better tank. As for Jepard's relic sets, your best options are very straightforward. The four-piece Knight of Purity Palace is his best overall set. It increases defense and the damage absorption of shields created by the wearer, which are both clearly important for Jepard. Then for your planar ornaments, the top choice would be Bellabog of the Architects, as it gives 15% defense, and if the user has at least 50% effect hit rate, they gain an extra 15% defense. Even without it, the 15% defense it gives by default is still helpful, so don't sweat it trying to reach 50% EHR. If you could reach it with enough relic substats, then that's pretty good. His 5-star light cone also helps a lot since it gives 24% EHR at S1. Another good choice is the Fleet of the Ageless set. It gives the user more HP, but more importantly, it gives your team an 8% attack buff to boost your overall damage output when Jepard hits at least 120 speed. This is only recommended if you can meet the speed requirement, since the HP buff by itself isn't as helpful. A third option is Sprightly Von Wack, which boosts ERR by 5% to help with his energy. With 120 speed, it gives an advance forward effect when entering battle, which helps Jepard generate energy sooner. Though even without the extra effect, the default 5% ERR is still useful. Let's move on to Jepard's light cones from his free-to-play to gacha options. Amber is the top 3-star light cone. It has low base stats as a 3-star and it increases the user's defense. It boosts defense further if the wearer's HP is lower than 50%, which you wouldn't ideally have to trigger, but at least it's added survivability. It's an okay option, but you should move on to a better light cone as soon as one is available. For 4-star light cones, I have two top recommendations. One is Landau's Choice, which features an actual little Jeppy. It further increases increases his likelihood to be attacked and gives the wearer a damage reduction bonus. You might be thinking that it has no defense bonus and the base defense stat it gives is also low, which doesn't give the highest shield potential compared to other light cones. But its main advantage is that by directing more attacks towards him, he gets energy back faster to refresh his ultimate and it reduces the need for your teammates to have much thicker shields anyway, and thanks to the damage reduction effect, he can absorb even more enemy damage. And this stacks with his A2 ability as well, if ever he does get knocked out from aggroing the enemy too much, at least he has his revive mechanic to fall back on. The second one is day one of my new life. While it's March's signature light cone, it's also great for Jepard as it increases the user's defense and damage reduction of all allies, so its benefits are team-wide, making it a highly recommended all-around preservation light cone. Both are really good options either way with their own particular benefits, so if you have one of them for Jepard, then consider yourself quite lucky. A next niche offensive option is the trend of the universal market. What makes it interesting is that there's a chance to burn the enemy if the wearer is attacked, and the burn damage over time scales on their defense. Jepard has an innate taunt buff, so that further increases the chance of proccing this, and if you use Jepard in a damage over time focused team, like with Sampo, that gives him additional offensive synergy as well. However, it has a relatively low defense stat, which impacts Jepard's shield strength. One more 4 star option is We Are Wildfire, which is purchasable from the Forgotten Hall shop. It gives a damage reduction bonus to allies for 5 turns and gives healing at the start of the battle, which gives some pseudo healing utility. But it doesn't have defense bonus and if the battle takes long, then its effect becomes less valuable when you could have something permanent like March's light cone. Then his best in slot and signature light cone is the 5 star moment of victory. It has the highest defense stat, gives huge defense bonuses, and also gives effect hit rate. It also makes the user more likely to be attacked, which makes him a more effective team tank and gets energy back faster. There are two more light cones that you might be wondering about, but I have more reservations about them. First is the Battle Pass Preservation Light Cone, This Is Me. While it gives a high base defense stat and some defense bonus, its ultimate buff will be useless on Jepard since his ultimate does not deal any damage. It's a stat stick at best, but I would not recommend getting this as their Battle Pass reward just for him. Second is the Texture of Memories, which you can get from Hurta's store by playing Simulated Universe and getting the store currency. The high base defense, effect resistance, and damage reduction stats are fine on Jepard part, as well as the emergency shielding. However, I would first prioritize getting either the destruction or hunt light cones in the store to give to your DPSs. And if you do have viable 4-star options mentioned, then that makes this light cone far less appealing. 
Finally, let's discuss Jepard's team synergies. As a preservation unit, he's not someone that you create a team around. Quite the opposite, actually. Jepard is a very flexible defensive unit that can easily slot in most teams to address their survivability. As a strong team-wide shielder, you can forgo having a healer and completely rely on his shields, though of course, you can always slot in another abundance or preservation unit for more comfort if you really want to. Since he's also a great skill point generator, he also helps with your team's skill point economy, especially if you pair him with skill point hungry teammates, which is actually most of our damage dealers. He has such good general support value that he just works so well in most teams you need him in, so let me just point out a few particular synergies you can note. While his freeze crowd control utility is also generally valuable for many teams, this can further synergize with slow effects from teammates like Welt or Dan Hung to really delay the enemy's turns and abilities. Since freezing enemies can also prolong their broken status, this can synergize well with units that exploit weakness broken enemies like Su Shang's sword stance and E1 effects. He's a really incredible pairing for Yan Qing. Yan Qing's soul steal sync buff disappears when he gets damage, so Jepard can aggro enemies away or shield Yan Qing really well to prevent the damage and preserve the sync state. Jepard also helps a lot with Arlen since Arlen wants to keep his health low enough and Jepard's stick shields can help Arlen be more in control of his own health and keep it at an optimal low zone. Pella has some nice synergy with Jepard since she can increase your entire team's effect hit rate and if you have her E4, she can also reduce the ice resistance of enemies which boosts Jepard's damage output. There are cases where Jepard isn't the best defensive support for your team, like with teammates that might want to get hit. With Clara, for example, he competes for aggro due to his ascension to ability, and more so if you use aggro increasing light cones, so that might reduce the opportunities for Clara's counterattack to proc. His freeze utility also becomes less viable as you want enemies to attack and proc Clara's counterattack. And if you want a super shielded team, you can pair him with March, who at least has some synergy with him, since casting her skill lets her proc counterattacks if any shielded character character gets attacked, and she can contribute as well in freezing enemies with Jepard. You might end up doing less damage, but it's really, really comfortable. Lastly, for the team arrangement, Jepard will be attracting a lot of enemy hits, so AoE enemy attacks can hit allies right beside him. In that case, if you want a certain unit to avoid getting hit by splash damage, place them opposite from Jepard's position. However, another way you can exploit his high aggro is by placing a teammate who you want to recharge energy faster beside Jepard. This is because even splash attacks generate energy for those who get hit by splash damage, and if your Jepard's shield is thick enough, they should be able to take the hit without getting damaged anyway. It's a riskier strategy, but it can be really helpful to further optimize your energy generation if done successfully. And that's it for this guide on Captain Jeppy. Right now, he's the only preservation unit that can't be obtained free from playing the story, making him a somewhat premium unit at the moment. But considering how meaty his shields are and how well he can protect his team, I think he lives up to those high expectations. If you pulled Jepard, whether you were hoping for him or not, I definitely think he's a character worth investing in to increase your survival options in team building, especially for Memory of Chaos and Forgotten Hall battles that need two teams to clear. This guy is definitely made to protect you with his life. Let me know in the comments what you think of Jepard, whether you're a Jepard haver or a Jepard wanter. If this video helped you out, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care. My apologies. I still have an assignment to attend to. I'll have to see you off from here.